there's uh, those replays and there's, there's a little tap there from Landaco. That is that is quality scrum half on scrum half action. Energetic, quick thinking, tenacious. They seem to play like they have a point to prove. They set the tempo, they distribute, they kick, they annoy. They snipe, they annoy. They control the game, they annoy. They link the forwards with the backs and along with the fly off, a scrum off forms part of the decision making access of the team. You will often hear experts say they play off nine or they play off ten. This is them referring to which position they believe the team has entrusted with most of the tactical decision making during open play, which is either your scrum off or fly off, respectively. Your captain, along with their leadership group, will make tactical decisions during stoppages in play, whilst your scrum off and fly off are the players entrusted with executing the team's strategy and tactics during open play. The nine is probably the easiest player to spot when watching a rugby game. They tend to be quite noticeable and the player people new to rugby remember first. As no other player on the team touches the ball more than they do. Typically one of the shortest players on the field because they spend a lot of time gathering the ball off the ground in order to distribute it to the rest of the team. And they have to cover a lot of ground as they have to make it to every ruck whilst on attack. So, it's not ideal to have a large player performing this role. At the heart of the scrum off role is the responsibility to distribute the ball effectively. When the ball emerges from the scrum, ruck or the back of a lineout and more, the scrum off is the player tasked with retrieving it. From here, the scrum off has a plethora of options available to them. They can choose to kick the ball long, kick it high, kick for territory, pass the ball, pass it short, pass it long, do a cutout pass, or they could even run it themselves. Traditionally though, the scrum off is expected to pass the ball to the fly off the majority of times, which means the fly off is expected to make and execute the majority of tactical decisions. This is because the fly off is positioned further back from the defensive line and therefore has more time to make and execute decisions. But it comes with a trade-off. Modern rugby needs teams to be more unpredictable. Let's think about it. Let's think about it from the opposition's point of view. If you always know the ball is going to pass through the same player in order for your opposition to execute, you are obviously going to come up with ways to target that player by cutting away their time and space and making them make rush decisions and forcing them to execute a variety of skills under pressure. So, modern rugby has adapted. The modern scrum half, along with some 12s and 15s, are expected to step up and help take on some of this burden, with a large portion of modern teams opting to mostly play off 9 rather than play off 10. It's never 100% one position over the other, but rather the balance varies across teams. Factors such as field position, match situation, opposition strength and weaknesses, as well as the scrum off and fly off respective experience and skill levels, determines which player the team would use the most. Regardless, the modern scrum off needs to have strong situational and match awareness. They need to be good at thinking on their feet <laughs> and off it. This also helps them direct the forwards who are constantly caught up in ruck battles. They need to help keep them coordinated, particularly during attacking play. So, in essence, they often have to drive the forwards. Hey, it's hard being the muscle and the brains. So rugby delegates the muscle work to the big forwards and the controlling to the players with the distribution skills. Because if you are the one deciding where the ball goes, you are controlling and driving the team. It's just another thing that makes rugby such a great team sport. A rugby team is this network of little relationships between positions, all working together as one big organism. And all parts are dependent on each other. The forwards need the nine and to a lesser extent the ten to be their eyes, whilst they have their heads in dark places. In return, the nine and ten need the forwards to provide them with clean ball and a platform of physical dominance, so that they have more time and space to execute. It is evident from watching the game that the decisions the scrum off make heavily influence the match. The fact that the nine is the player that distributes from the base of the ruck 
ensures them the earliest position in the supply chain, meaning their decisions to pass straight to a crush ball runner, a pot of forwards, box kick, kick for territory, cut out pass to get it wide quickly, or if as discussed, they do the status quo and pass to the fly off, has a significant impact on the game. The fly off, who is positioned further back from the defensive line, has the advantage of time and space, and a better vantage point of the playing field, as well as the positioning of the opposition. But the scrum off has the advantage of surprise. Their decisions are harder to predict and see coming, most of the time. For example, if the nine realizes that the opposition does not have the backfield sufficiently covered, they may decide to kick into the space straight from the ruck, rather than waste time passing it back to the 10 first, to ensure the opposition don't have enough time to fill the space. So, most teams would have the 10 control the game, with the nine having license to make executive decisions. Some teams prefer the nine as the better option to control the game. This is usually when the team has an exceptionally talented 9 or an inexperienced 10. The relationship between your scrum half and fly off is important because regardless of who controls the game, the 10 along with the help of the 15 usually manages the backline's positioning. And as discussed, the 9 steers the forwards around. So their relationship and understanding is the link that coordinates the forwards and backs to operate cohesively. If you have seen my first video where I summarize all 15 positions, card up here, link in the description, you may remember that I described the scrum half as the pulse of the team. Now I mean that on two different levels. First, they are the pulse of the team because they set the pace of play. It's their quick or slow distribution that dictates how fast or slow the team plays. Second, they are the pulse of the team in the sense that they can feel the health of the team's entire system. In other words, they are best placed to pretty much feel which limbs of the team are operating effectively and which aren't. They can feel when and which areas of the game the forwards are being dominated or they are dominating because they are constantly retrieving the ball either under pressure or they seem to have a lot of time to make decisions. They can also feel how well or not well the backline is operating because, well, they are part of the backline. So if I coached the team, I would always take 30 seconds to hear a quick report from the nine at the halftime break. I feel it would serve as a good soundboard for my perception of how things are going. During scrums, the scrum off is responsible for feeding the scrums when the putting to the scrum has been awarded to their team. If you have had the opportunity to check out my video outlining how rugby works, card up here, link in the description. You may remember me explaining how the rules of rugby dictate that the scrum off has to feed the ball down the middle of the scrum. But in practice, the referees are very lenient on this and scrum offs generally feed the ball almost straight under their team's feet. So the team feeding the scrum wins almost all the scrums and the team winning the scrum against the pudding does happen, but it's rare. During lineouts, the scrum half would position themselves near the lineout in order to be able to collect the ball once the lineout jumpers have secured it. Behind the lineout, they could receive the ball from a slap down, usually when their jumpers have managed to disrupt the opposition's throw and win the ball against the throw. Or they will collect the ball clean from the jumper or retrieve it from the back of the mall that often forms after a lineout. It's important to note that most nines would operate under a game plan. The game plan would outline under which situations and in which parts of the field the nine should look to kick, pass, or run the ball. And also when they would feed the ball to the 10 for the 10 to execute these options themselves. If you are an aspiring rugby player looking to learn how to play scrum half, you are in luck. The number nine is the easiest player in the game to follow and learn what they do by watching. On defense, the scrum half can play a variety of roles. Some teams like to have the nine play a sweeper role. In other words, they would be running just behind the defensive line in order to be a backup defender and to ensure they are in a position to attack in case the team manages to turn the ball over. In other words, they are in a position to distribute the ball quickly. Attacking quickly off turnover ball is one of the best opportunities to score because the opposition is set up for attack 
and not defense. So having the nine in a position to take advantage quickly before the opposition gets time to reshuffle their defense is quite valuable. You will often hear rugby experts talk about the value of turnover ball. The scrum half or halfback, as the position is also known in some parts of the world, offers a space for players with a smaller stature to be quite influential in a game where size and power often gets the final say. Couple this with their strong personality type that seems to thrive in a rugby environment. And you have a position that seems to invoke higher levels of emotion from fans and other players. They add something to the game that can't be quantified. In a sport built for size and power, they buck the trend and show the world that they can compete with people bigger and more powerful than they are. As much as they used to get under my skin in my playing days, I respected most scrum halves for their fearlessness and their tenacity. I hope this video gave you a better idea of what the scrum half is about. You may have noticed that this video was slightly different when compared to the videos I did covering the forwards. I feel I can better explain Explain what backline players do in the form of a story rather than concentrating heavily on what scrum offs do at scrum time, line out time, etc. etc. That's because backline play is more fluid and not as structured and rigid as forward play. So my videos will follow the same philosophy. If you've watched this video this far, please let me know what you thought of the video. Was it helpful? Is there anything you would like me to clarify? And if you'd like to see my upcoming videos, hit that like and subscribe button. And apparently hitting the notification button is also a good thing. And lastly, if you'd like to show your support, you can buy me a haircut. Uh, there's a link pinned in the comments. Thank you. Bye-bye.